Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about shock. Shock occurs when the body's organs and tissues don't receive enough blood and oxygen. There are many different types of shock, but they're all categorized by a sudden drop in blood pressure and inadequate blood supply to organs and tissues, leading to hypoxia. Shock is a life-threatening condition and is reversible if treated early. However, the effects of shock can become quickly irreversible, resulting in multi-organ failure and death. The symptoms of shock reflect the body's compensatory response to low tissue perfusion and will vary depending on the cause and severity. The main symptoms of shock include hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, oliguria, skin changes, including cool, clammy, pale, with reduced peripheral perfusion, a change in mental state, agitation, confusion, or unresponsiveness. There's some important definitions we need to be aware of. Hypotension is defined as low blood pressure, typically less than 90 over 60 millimeters mercury. Some say less than 100. Tachycardia, which is rapid heart rate, greater than 100 beats per minute. Tachypnea, rapid breathing, greater than 25 breaths per minute. And oliguria, which is low urine output, less than 400 mils in 24 hours. An important concept to understand is that of mean arterial pressure when talking about shock. So blood pressure is classically made up of two readings the systolic blood pressure over the diastolic blood pressure. An average blood pressure for a normal healthy adult is 120 over 80 millimeters mercury. Shock occurs when the blood pressure is low, causing inadequate supply of oxygen to the tissues or the organs. The mean arterial pressure, or MAP, is a good indicator of tissue perfusion rather than the systolic blood pressure. The mean arterial pressure is the average arterial pressure throughout one cardiac cycle. The two major determinants of uh, mean arterial pressure are cardiac output and peripheral resistance. The relationship between mean arterial pressure and its determinants is given by the following equation, where mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac output times total peripheral resistance. It is important to note that the equation only represents the relationship between the mean arterial pressure and its determinants. The actual mean arterial pressure can be calculated using the following formula, where mean arterial pressure is the diastolic blood pressure essentially, plus the systolic blood pressure minus the diastolic blood pressure over 3. A normal mean arterial pressure is somewhere around 65 to 100 millimeters mercury. Current guidelines recommend targeting a mean arterial pressure uh, goal of 65 millimeters mercury to meet organ perfusion. There are many types of shock. Shock can be divided into four main types. Hypovolemic, cardiogenic shock, obstructive shock, and distributive shock. Distributive shock is further divided into septic shock, anaphylactic shock, and neurogenic shock. Now these different types of shock usually have a similar clinical manifestation, which is hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, an altered mental status, cold, clammy extremities with modeling of the skin, and oliguria. Other features will depend on the type of shock. So for hypovolemic shock, you can have dry mucous membranes, a low jugular venous pressure. In cardiogenic shock, you can have chest pains. In septic shock, febrile and rigors. And in anaphylactic shock, angioedema and urticaria. There are also stages of shock, where pre-shock you have early, compensated shock, where symptoms are absent or mild. Then shock, 
the compensatory mechanisms become overwhelmed and symptoms of organ dysfunction begin to appear. Then you have end organ dysfunction where you have progressive shock that leads to irreversible organ damage and death. Investigations to order for individuals with suspected shock include a full blood count where you want to look for any drop in hemoglobin and the white cell count to see if they're septic. Urinalysis to check the white cells if there's an infection. Arterial and venous blood gas to check for acidosis and hyperlactatemia. An electrocardiogram, coagulation studies, an echocardiogram if possible, a chest x-ray, and you can consider a further imaging, a CT chest abdopelvis, for example. Infective screen, which includes blood cultures and C-reactive protein and procalcitonin, specifically if you're concerned of an infection. The general approach to management uh, really depends on the severity and cause of the shock. The aim of treatment is to reduce the mortality and treat the underlying cause. Performing first aid is very important. Fluid replacement uh, due to the person being hypotensive. Blood transfusion if needed. Medications can be used to increase blood pressure, such as uh, metaraminol. Emergency surgery if indicated. Intravenous antibiotics if they are septic. Intravenous steroids and uh, allergy medications if they're in anaphylactic shock. Let's talk about the different types of shock and the causes. So remember, shock can be categorized as hypovolemic, cardiogenic, obstructive, or distributive shock. However, it is possible for patients to have a combined shock where more than one type is present. Undifferentiated shock is when shock is recognized, but the cause is not clear. Here is a schematic diagram representing the body circulation the heart pumping blood around the body and the vessels contracting and dilating to maintain a normal blood pressure and organ perfusion. Remember the important relationship of mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac output multiplied by total peripheral resistance. The first type of shock is hypovolemic shock, and this is caused by a sudden decrease in circulating blood volume. This can be divided into hemorrhagic and non-hemorrhagic causes. Hemorrhagic causes include a decrease in blood volume due to blood loss, such as trauma, internal bleeding, intraoperative or postoperative bleeding. Non-hemorrhagic causes is a decrease in blood volume due to fluid loss other than blood, such as burns, loss of uh, sodium and water from the gastrointestinal tract, the skin, and the kidneys. Essentially, loss of blood volume results in both a reduced total peripheral resistance and or a reduction in cardiac output, which will result in a reduced mean arterial pressure. Cardiogenic shock is caused by the heart's failure to pump blood around the body. There are many causes of cardiogenic shock, which can be divided into four main categories. Cardiomyopathic involves problems with the heart muscles, the myocardium. These can include myocardial infarction and ischemia, myocardial depression, and myocarditis. Arrhythmic causes, you know, problems with the heart rate or rhythm. This can include arterial and ventricular tachyarrhythmias or arterial and ventricular bradyarrhythmias. Mechanical causes of cardiogenic shock involve problems with the heart structure itself. So, for example, valve insufficiencies or defects, aortic dissection or abscess, ventricular septal defect or rupture of the ventricles or a tumor that's present. Other causes of cardiogenic shock include toxic substances such as alcohol, recreational drugs, infection involving the heart uh, or the body, as well as severe hypertension, causing damage to the actual heart itself. All these causes will lead to a reduced cardiac output, which means a reduced mean arterial pressure. 
The third type of shock is obstructive shock, and this is caused by an obstruction to cardiac outflow or filling. This can result from pulmonary embolism, which is a large clot in the pulmonary trunk or artery, severe pulmonary hypertension, cardiac tamponade, which is a, where you have significant amount of fluid around the heart impacting filling of the heart, tension pneumothorax, which will impact filling of the heart, constrictive pericarditis, where you have thickened and fibrotic pericardium, restrictive cardiomyopathy, stiffening of the heart chambers, uh, as well as abdominal compartment syndrome, which can also cause an obstructive shock. Obstructive shock really causes obstruction of cardiac output through multiple ways. Therefore, reducing cardiac output means you have a reduced mean arterial pressure and therefore a low perfusion to organs. The final type of shock is distributive shock, and this is caused by a system-wide vasodilation where intravascular volume is redirected to the interstitial space. The three subtypes are septic, anaphylactic, and urogenic shock. Septic shock is when you have uncontrolled inflammatory response to infection, resulting in systemic vasodilation and capillary leakage. Infections including gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria, viral, fungal, and parasitic in, uh, infections can cause this. Septic shock is more common in ICU and immunosuppressed patients. Anaphylactic shock is where you have a severe allergic reaction where the allergen enters the bloodstream, resulting in an exaggerated immune inflammatory response. This includes a massive release of histamine that triggers systemic vasodilation, bronchial constriction, and tongue swelling. Neurogenic shock is where you have severe traumatic brain or spinal cord injury that compromises the sympathetic nervous system, resulting in an unopposed parasympathetic response, which will lead to a decrease in vascular resistance, vasodilation. This autonomic nervous system imbalance often presents with hypotension, bradyarrhythmias, and temperature dysregulation. Neurogenic shock occurs with uh, spinal cord injury above the level of T6. In summary, distributive shock causes systemic vasodilation and therefore reduced total peripheral resistance, which means it reduces mean arterial pressure and organ perfusion. So in summary, shock occurs when the body's organs and tissues don't receive enough blood and oxygen. There are four main types of shock, hypovolemic shock, cardiogenic shock, obstructive shock, and distributive shock. Resuscitation is important to maintain an adequate blood pressure to maintain organ perfusion. Thank you for watching.